What's going on guys? Zerus here. You know, and, um, today's video, I am going to talk about Anita Sarkeesian for the first time on my channel, ever. And um, Anita Sarkeesian is a very big uh, feminist and a very big feminist topic that a lot of people like get into, right? And so this video is really going to focus kind of on um, Women as Background Tropes Part 2. Now, it's not going to be like a point-by-point -point video response, and you can probably tell by the length of the video. If you would like a point-by-point -point video response, uh, go check out Jordan Owen's channel. He has like a, I think it's like almost two hours long, where he dissects every point that Anita Sarkeesian makes. If that's, what, if that's what you're looking for, this isn't that video. No. Um, it's really going to be two things. It's going to be me kind of talking about the crux of Anita's argument, or lack thereof, and kind of giving a different perspective that I don't think she's seen, you know. So, um, you know, before we get into that, let's, uh, let's talk about why I haven't ever chatted about Anita Sarkeesian before. Because I'm going to be honest with you guys, you know. Um, it kind of sucks to admit this, but I'm going to let it out. <laughs> I was almost a feminist. I, I know, I know, uh, a little bit of a shocker, but uh, when I was younger, when I was slightly younger, you know, before I started making all these, you know, these these videos where I try to help people think and come up with the Zaria show and whatnot, you know, um, I had a deep love and a deep craving for women. I loved, I wanted female attention really, really bad. When I was younger, you know, so in my mind, women were always elevated. And whenever something bad happened to women, I got fucking angry about it. And, and I was close to being a feminist. I, I won't lie to anyone. I was close. I wasn't a full-fledged feminist, but I was leaning on there. And it wasn't because um, I thought they were oppressed. It was because, you know, in a lot of my life, women were being victimized when I see women get hurt all the time but then good thing is you know I met my ex-girlfriend and she kind of slapped some common sense into me you know because even though I call her a jackass a lot I mean she she it's a good thing I met her um even though she is she's a fucking asshole but I sing her praises I sing her praises although I admit she's a fucking jackass so that being said you know um I used to check out Feminist Frequency I used to check out Anita's channel you know before the whole women versus video game trope thing uh, I, I remember the first video I saw was on, like, the, her talking about Legos. And I wasn't, and, and I never really took her wholeheartedly serious. I just always took what she said as something interesting to think about, you know. So I stopped by and I watched some of her videos on feminism, and, or like, tropes versus women. And I just thought it was interesting. I didn't, I didn't take what she said as the gospel truth. It's just something, you know, like, it's something I was thinking, you know, she's talking about the Legos. I was like, you know, that's, that's an interesting topic that we use toys to teach men and women things, but I didn't look at it as such a negative thing. I just thought it was interesting how we had the toolboxes for boys and the barber doll and the babies for the girls, you know, that kind of level. Just expanding my mind. <clears throat> so then she has the Kickstarter campaign, and I saw her video where she's like talking about how she's a gamer, you know? And, uh,. I was like, okay, female gamers, they're kind of rare, but alright, and I didn't support the Kickstarter because I'm damn broke, but, um, you know, I, I, I watched the video and I thought, okay, this might be very interesting. So, um, the first episode came out, uh, Tropes, Women vs. Video Games, or Tropes vs. Women Video Games, that very first one came out, and I watched it again, I thought it was interesting. I just, I didn't take it as the gospel truth, I just thought it was something interesting to check out and see. And so then, what happened was I found out Anita was a snake, and I found out she lied, and I lost all of my respect for her when I found out that she did not like video games. And this kind of leads me to the next issue as to why I never really talk about Anita, because I myself... I'm not really a gamer, you know, like, I love video games, I like playing video games, I used to play video games all the time when I was younger, but now that, um, I'm an adult, I don't really have, you know, a lot of time to really sit down and invest into a console, but, um, last year I had a roommate named Tom, and we played a couple of video games, I played Prototype 2, you know, I like video games, uh, one video game that I play all of the fucking time, though, is Adventure Quest Worlds, and I don't care what anybody says, Adventure Quest Worlds is one of my favorite video games of all fucking time. Okay, I love that game. And in fact, Adventure Quest Worlds is going to become very important 
in the crux of this video. So keep that in mind. I'm going to talk about Adventure Quest Worlds. But, you know, I won't lie. I'm not really a gamer. I'm not a console gamer. I'm not a PC gamer. I guess I'm a web browser gamer because I love Adventure Quest Worlds. And I don't care. You can badmouth Adventure Quest Worlds all you fucking want. I love that game. So I'm going to lie about being a gamer. I lost my respect for it. And then I see lots of people come up with their videos about Anita Sarkeesian. So I never, so, so the bottom line is I never addressed Anita because uh, I I wanted to play lots of those games you talked about, but I didn't have the knowledge to counterbag anything, so I let other people handle it. But I think this time I can add a little bit of something to think about into uh, the conversation with her whole Women as Background Tropes Part 2 and really talk about that. So um, with that being said, I hope that explains why I never talked about Anita. I know one subscriber of mine wondered when I was going to respond to Anita. Well, hopefully I'm doing you justice. If you didn't leave, he, he probably left. Lots of people unsubscribe all the time. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and um, let's get started. This thing will be particularly graphic and include scenes of extreme violence against women. I define the women as background decoration trope as the subset of largely insignificant, non-playable female characters whose sexuality or victimhood is exploited as a way to infuse edgy, gritty, or racy flavoring into game worlds. These sexually objectified female bodies are designed to function as environmental texture while titillating presumed straight male players. Okay, so that's pretty much what she sets out to do. That's her mission statement in this video. So, uh, we're gonna watch one more clip where I really had the most issue with and I really am going to focus a lot of what I'm going to say today is going to be focused on. So one more clip and then we'll really get started. The cow herd who can no longer afford the cattle! <laughs> Rape and sexual assault are also frequently used as a sort of narrative currency to try and raise the emotional stakes and heighten the dramatic tension for gamers. Die, mama. Come on, spread them legs. Oh, please, don't, no! Karuba, what? You think you're too good for us? No, please, please help! Ah! Quiet, you suck in a bitch! Shut up! The fuck up! These brutal scenes often occur as scripted events triggered when the player enters particular areas. I got plans for you! Scripted events are typically not part of the game's main storyline, but are instead designed to seem like random chance encounters. They're meant to make the game world appear more alive or unpredictable and therefore more believable. In Grand Theft Auto V, one such chance encounter features a scene evocative of sexual assault, in which a young woman is being attacked and held down by two men on the side of the road. Get off of me, you old pervert! Walk away! Don't make this your problem! The player can rescue her by killing her assailants, or simply watch the scene play out in front of them. These vignettes are not major plot points. Instead, violence against women is essentially used as a set piece to establish or punctuate the seedy atmosphere of crime and chaos ridden fictional universes. You like that? That feel good? Fuck. It's meant to paint the gaming environment with a harsh brush, but it ends up doing so on the backs of women's bodies, casually sacrificing female characters in the name of setting a ruthless narrative tone are treated to randomly triggered events in which female prostitutes are assaulted and murdered by Johns amid a torrent of misogynistic slurs. Players are presented with the choice to either intervene and save the woman for a small cash reward, or simply watch the attack play out in front of them as part of the entertainment. Help! Someone! Stinking whore! I'm gonna cut you a new hole! You think I'm a joke? Go on then! Laugh, bitch, laugh! If the player sticks around long enough, or leaves and then re-enters the same location, the scene will eventually repeat itself again and again, very much like the animatronic vignettes in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland. Stinking whore! I'm gonna cut you a new hole! You think I'm a joke? Go on then! Laugh, bitch, laugh! The audience is meant to briefly gasp at these acts of brutality, before their attention is directed. So let's get into this, you know, because, um... I think this is very interesting to chat about, right? And I talk about this on my channel a lot too, and, and a lot of my longtime subscribers are really going to understand where I'm going with this, you know? So if you're new here, it's your first video you're watching, you know, just stay tuned. 
I'll talk about this a lot more in detail in other videos. But um, let's let's get into this. So Anita's main issue is that um, these women are not fleshed out characters, and that they're just used to perpetuate the story. You know, kind of already went along and said that, but. Also, she goes on to complain about how the male demographic, the white cis heterosexual male, are being titillated by all of these fantasies of, you know, rape and whatnot, and being titillated by these sexy strippers and everything like that. And of course, fan service is a part of uh, gaming. Fan service is a part of manga and anime. It's a part of a lot of stuff, you know, and a lot of different media. You know, sometimes, you know, the, the author, the writer, is going to draw a sexy... I mean, fairy tale is fucking riddled with fan service, right? If you read the manga fairy tale, right? You know, so fan service is definitely going to be a part of it. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's ever an issue in fan service. You know, I know a lot of people like to complain about fan service and say it takes away from the story, but I say, I mean, if you can control yourself, I mean... <laughs> Fan service isn't all that distracting if you really want to listen to the story. I mean, One Piece, every single character, I, I'm not all female, I, actually I think most female characters in One Piece have like fucking double deep breasts and people are still focusing on the story. I mean, so fan service actually isn't even a, a factor to me. I do like fan service, I don't like bullshit nobody. But um, yeah, you know, so that's one of our problems is how there are sexy female characters that kind of pander to that demographic, and it kind of makes sense why that would be the case, you know, um, you want to get more male characters into it, you know, you're gonna get them by selling sex, that's what we use for everything, you know, and so, again, that's a very interesting topic to get into, but I guess it's a little bit of an explanation as to why they, why these female characters are there, because primarily the, the demographic, excuse me, is males playing these games, it makes sense why that would be the case. So then she starts talking about how, um, in some of these games, you can sit by and you can watch violence against women occur. Now, this is where I have the issue. This is where the meat of the video comes into, and I'm going to focus primarily on. So you can watch everyone else break or the whole thing down, but I'm focusing more on the watching bad things happen thing, right? What Anita Sarkeesian fails to understand is that all of the video games she chose, well, not all of them, but a lot of them, were either sandbox games or choice written games. In other words, they're games where your actions determines the outcome of the game. She talked about Dishonored. Dishonored is a fantastic game. I think one I think one claim to the game is that you can actually go through the whole game without killing anybody. But the mechanism of Dishonored is every time you kill somebody or every time you mess up or you kill a civilian, um, the game you are not penalized immediately by the game. Like, in other words, you won't die and be respawned, or you won't fail the mission. Instead, the, the NPCs around you are going to start treating you a different way. So based on if you gather good karma, I don't think there's a karma system in the game, but if there is, you would gather good karma, and more characters are going to help you out in the game. Or you can be a complete asshole, and lots of other characters are going to hate you and fight against you. You know, but the game penalizes you, not outright by saying, we start the mission, but it penalizes you based on your actions. You know, we have a lot more games like that nowadays. You know, you have the sandbox games where you can run around and do whatever you want. This, these are the most fantastic games around. The, the, the sandbox games, the games with the moral code system like Infamous, you know, Infamous Second Son, uh, Mass Effect 3. This is why people love Mass Effect and this is also why people are so upset with the Mass Effect ending. These games allow you to make decisions, they allow you to choose, they allow you to interact with the game. And your actions have repercussions, you know, and it's a very, it's a very engrossing experience, you know. So when people say, uh, so I agree when people say our video games are absolutely, you know, um, you know, with the art gallery, you look at a painting and you just look at it and you might feel something, you know. Even with a movie, you know, you watch movies. And I love movies, man. I, I want to be in movies. But video games do something different. It allows you to interact with the environment. It allows you to interact with the characters. and allows you to go into a world where you get tested. That's another thing. So with the whole moral code system that happens in a lot of these games, you get to choose whether or not you're going to do something good or something bad. And this is another, this is why another reason why I love Adventure Quest World, you know, because you get, you get choices. And um, your choices have an effect on the game. 
it has an effect on what you're going to do or like what items you can get in the game it has an effect on what type of quests you can do in the game what type of happens in the, and i think the, the main storyline of adventure quest world is pretty much constant for good and evil characters you kind of say things differently but as terms as the side quests and in terms of the items you get you get different stuff with your evil character or a good character and that's how it is with a lot of games you know and the human element in the game that like anikita fails to understand is the choice in it all you know, so when she has her examples of, you know, sitting by and watching women get hurt, or like, I think it was one game, I think it was Far Cry, I could be wrong, but um, where when you sit by and you watch this one guy beat up the whore or beat up the woman, it will play over and over again. But what she fails to understand, or either she's just blatantly lying, is the whole point is to do something. The whole point is to help the woman. And that in itself, is very very powerful because watch this the mere fact that these women are background characters shows the humanity of the pure people playing the game i'll give an example okay this is i'm gonna explain this to you okay so there's this girl in my film class and she is beautiful she is gorgeous she has the most amazing blue eyes like her voice she's just she's a beautiful person but i don't know anything about her i'm gonna be i don't know her I don't know what her fucking hopes and dreams are. I don't know what she wants to do in life. I don't know this person. I just know what she looks like. She's just, she's a girl. She has a vagina. I think she's beautiful. It's that simple, really. You know? I have no obligation to this girl. I don't know her. I, nothing I can do for her. She hasn't done anything for me. She just is. So, now, let's put this in video game context. Let's say, fuck all, I'll be the Avatar. A master of all four elements, right? And an interdimensional time demon comes out of nowhere and attacks this girl in my film class. Now, I have no obligation to this girl. If the interdimensional time demon wanted to kill her, I mean, it has no real relevance to me. Granted, I won't be able to see her anymore, but I mean, should she die? Well, you know, well fuck, that's just one less person in the world. There's seven billion people here. But the mere fact that I have the power to do something and I do fight the interdimensional time demon. If I do, you know, use my fire bending, air bending, and all that to fight this demon off, I'm protecting someone I have no obligation to. And that's the humanity that video games explore. They explore the, the mere fact that these women are these background decorations, or the mere fact that they have no relevance to the story adds to the story and the humanity in people it adds to the empathy because in real life men cannot stand it when women are getting hurt and attacked even when women are causing it for the most part now of course you know you have the men with the common sense who say if a woman is beating up a man okay maybe she should not get her ass beat but i mean if he hits back it's understandable but you have me where i say that um no man really should hit a woman I mean, we're stronger than them, but I can understand I can understand why he would. I don't think he should do it, but I understand it. But then you have, you know, some women who's like getting beaten in the street. Nobody is going to sit there and watch that for the most part. You do you, you get some dicks. But you're going to find a lot of white knight men who are going to run out of nowhere to go beat up a guy who's attacking a woman. And that is the morality that video games explore. They explore morality. Where you can be, again, an infamous second son. You can either be evil or you can be good. You know, it's depending on your actions. And that's what makes video games art. That it is interactive. You know? And Anita Sarkeesian completely misses that. You know, it, it is because these women are these background decorations that adds humanity to the game. Because it tests whether or not you want to protect this person who has no relevance to you. It's been... It, it, should she die, and she, Anita is right, in the context of the story, her life doesn't matter. To you, you have no obligation to her. Again, to the girl in the film class, I don't have any obligation to her. I don't have to do shit for this girl. But the mere fact that I put my life on the line to protect her from an interdimensional time demon really shows the humanity inside of me or inside anyone else who would have done the same thing. You know, and so this is why I, I love Adventure Quest Worlds, you know, because you, you get choices, you get decisions, you get tested morally. What are you going to do? 
if you have the power? That's a question video game only only video games can ask that question, and only video games can you be penalized or can you be rewarded for either doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. So Anita Sarkeesian completely misses the choice that's in video games, the free will, the free reign. Of course, there are rules in the game, you know, there's some things you can do and you can't do that you can't unlock and all of that. But the choice in the sandbox, or the choice in the games with moral codes, like Mass Effect and all of that, the beauty is you can stop the rapist. You know, you can stop the interdimensional time demon. You can fight them off. And it's not wrong to have these women in these games. It's because, I mean, you would do that for someone you love. And here's the thing, because doing like protecting someone you love is kind of like an obligation, you know? Like if you're married or if it's your mom or your sister, your friend, you kind of it's kind of expected for you to do it. But to protect a, a stranger from a fucking monster, that's something that garners respect and admiration because you didn't have to do it. And a lot of people feel, don't, don't appreciate these Samaritans who are putting themselves on the line. And I think people really should appreciate the fact that I have no obligation to do something, and I'm doing it anyway. You know, so that's really just my thought on that one thing Anita said. Again, if you want to watch a whole video of dissecting Anita, go check out Jordan Owen. It's very long. You probably have to mark time and whatnot. But that's just something I wanted to talk about, man. You guys, you know, tell me your thoughts on uh, what I said on Anita's video. And, um... Let's try not to be dicks to Anita. I mean, because we already know. It's not that I respect Anita. It's because I don't want her using this shit any more than she already has, okay? So this will be a forum for some okay discussion about video games. Because Anita's being an asshole and disabling her comments. So, um, yeah, with that being said, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And um, if you did, man, go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below, and as always, have a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios. I really hope that girl in my film class does not watch this video. Shit.